Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. Last week, we started a new series called The Law of Love. And let me just read over some well-known scriptures about love and God's instructions to us to walk in love. And let me remind you that we are also specifically talking about the God kind of love because we started this study with looking at just two of the Greek words that we translate into English as love. Now, in Greek, there are even more words that we would translate love, but we just looked at two to compare the God kind of love and natural human love. And the Greek word that we are looking at that is the God kind of love, is the Greek word agape. It is the love of God. It is unselfish. It is sacrificial. It is a choice and a decision that is not based on feelings. This is so very important because you have to realize you love people not Based on your feelings, you may not feel love, but it's not always a feeling because the God kind of love is also a covenantal commitment. It's a commitment. It's a choice. It's a decision. And you do it whether you feel it or not. That especially comes in to play when you talk about loving your enemies, loving those who have hurt you. There will be no feeling. There are no good, mushy, gushy feelings for those that you don't like, people you don't like. But that's where it is a decision. It's a choice. And it is a commitment, covenantal commitment. Whereas the human love, natural love, flesh love, we looked at one Greek word called uh, the word phileo, and it means fondness, affection, sentiment, and feeling. And that is feelings. And it is based on feelings. It is selfish. It is physical. That's the kind of love that is up and down here today, gone tomorrow, because it is based on feelings. There is no commitment in it. And that's where people sometimes say, well, we've fallen in love. Well, they've had some feelings. They've had some of those gushy feelings, but then they get mad at the person They get offended at the person and boom, the feelings are gone and they say, I don't love you anymore because they don't feel the gushy feeling that they had before. Well, that is flesh love and that is not the love that we are commanded to walk in. We are commanded to walk in the agape love, the love of God that is not based on feelings. Even when you have no feelings of love, you choose to love. It's a decision to love. It is a commitment to love. And so let's begin again with 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 and 5. In the Amplified Bible, love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious, nor boils over with jealousy, is not boastful or vainglorious, does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Now, that is a powerful explanation and description of love in the Amplified Bible. 
We also looked last week at Matthew 22, 36 through 40. And this is when the uh, teacher asked the Lord Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus said, how do you interpret the law? And he said, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, you have answered correctly. This is the fulfillment of the law. And then in Romans 13, Romans 13, verse 10, says, well, let's start in verse 8, Romans 13, 8 through 10, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. The commandments do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet. And whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in this one rule. Love your neighbor as yourself. Why? Because love does no harm to its neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Love is the fulfillment of the whole law. Because if you love your neighbor, you will not hurt your neighbor. And then in Colossians 3, 12 through 14, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion. So there is a putting on. It's a clothing that you wear. It is a spiritual clothing, but it is a clothing that you wear. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you have against one another and for and then verse 14 over all these oh, forgive as the lord forgave you and over all these virtues put on love put on you say well that's just a put on yes exactly it is a put on because you don't always feel it It is a put on. It is a put on. It says put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. It is a choice. I am going to love. I choose to love. I I decide to love. Let's read some scriptures out of first John chapter four. The book of first John talks a lot about love. So first John chapter four. Verses seven and eight. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Where does love come from? It comes from God. We're going to look at that later when we talk about how to walk in love. Love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Verses 11 and 12. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Verses 16 and 17. So we know and Rely on the King James says, believe. So we'll see that also believe the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. Did you realize that you could, could you can have confidence on judgment day? It is an amazing thought, but you need to study that. God is saying so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. You can stand before God on judgment. You say, well, I'm not going to be judged. Yes, everybody stands before God on judgment day. There is a different judgment for the children of God than the wicked, than the unbelievers, than the those that are not saved. Those that are not saved 
will be judged after the millennial reign of Christ, which is a thousand years, at what is called the white throne judgment. That's the judgment of the wicked. But there is also a judgment of the righteous that will occur when we stand before God on judgment day. And there are many scriptures in the New Testament about we will all stand before the Lord on judgment day. Romans 14, 10 Romans. This is the book of Romans, the letter of Paul to the church at Romans, at the church at Rome, the Romans, the Roman Christians in Romans 14, 10 says you then, why do you judge your brother? Or why do you look down on your brother? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. We will all stand before God's judgment seat. So that is New Testament. That's the letter of Paul to the church at Rome. We will all stand before God's judgment seat. And so we need to remember that, that we will all stand before God's judgment seat. And notice here then in first John four seventeen, we can have confidence on the day of judgment. You can actually stand before God's judgment seat with confidence. In verse 17, again, it says in this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we. As he is in this world, so are we. And then let's go on verses 19 through 21 in First John 4, 19 to 21. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us the, this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. First John chapter five, verses one through five. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God by loving God and carrying out his commands. This is love for God to obey his commands and his commands are not burdensome for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Even our faith, who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. So we are the children of God and we know we are children of God because we love one another. And then of course, you know, the scriptures about loving your enemies. And I'm just refreshing your memory on this because you've already heard these before, but let's hear them again. You know, this again is one of the ways that we are able to walk in love. Matthew chapter five, verses 43 to 46. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be the sons. And that word son is the word for adult. It's the Greek word huios, H-U-I-O-S, that refers to the adult, full-grown, mature son. This is a characteristic of spiritual maturity. We talked a few months ago about the stages of spiritual growth. We mentioned three, the babies the child youth or the development stage and the adult. And a lot of Christians think they're adult Christians, but they're not. They're babies or they're children because they have not matured in the things of God. And this is one of the characteristics of maturity. And this is a sign that shows you have matured. And it says in verse 44 and 45, I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be sons. And that's adult, mature, full grown sons of your father in heaven. So when you are able to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, it is a sign of spiritual maturity and development. Children don't do that. Christian, uh, 
the, and again, remember, we've said before that it, spiritual maturity is not the same and based on physical maturity or age or time, how long you've been a Christian. People, there are Christians who have been Christians for 50 years and they're still babies or children because they have never done what it takes to mature in the Lord through studying the word and practicing it. And so you can be 50 years old and 60 years old and 70 years old and still be a spiritual baby or a spiritual child because you have not practiced those things that show spiritual development and maturity. And so one of the things that shows spiritual development and maturity is loving your enemies and praying for those who persecute you. Verse 46, Matthew 5, 46 says, if you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? Yes. And so, uh, and then Romans 12, 14, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Verse 16, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Do not be conceited. And verse 17, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Verse 18, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Verse 19, do not take revenge, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Verse 20, on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. And verse 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And remember, first Peter four, eight says love covers over a multitude of sins. We have examples in the New Testament of those who practiced this love. We see it when Jesus hung on the cross. He was nailed to the cross. He was beaten. He was ridiculed and he was receiving capital punishment. This was the worst kind of death. And it was reserved for the worst criminal. So he was being shamed as well as being crucified in and, and the physical pain. There was the shame that went with it. And in Luke 23, 34, 23, 34, Jesus said, as he hung on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. They know not what they do. And you say, well, yeah, but that was Jesus. Well, let me remind you that Jesus was human. Jesus was human. We have studied in the past Philippians chapter two, verses five particularly six through eight, where Jesus emptied himself. That was he emptied himself of all God power, all God ability. You know what are characteristics of God? God is omniscient. That means all knowing. He is omnipotent, omnipotent. That means all power. And he is omnipresent, meaning he is everywhere at the same time. Well, obviously, Jesus was not everywhere at the same time. He was in a flesh body. Well, also, he was not omniscient because it says he grew in wisdom. You can't grow in wisdom if you know everything. He was dependent on the Holy Spirit just like you. And then he was not omnipotent. And there were things he could not do. And he did no miracles until he received the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon him when he was baptized in the Jordan River by John. And so he did not he did no miracles because in John two, it says his first miracle was at Cana. And if that was his first miracle, if it says it was his first miracle, it was his first miracle. The first miracle he ever did was in Cana. 
So if you read any of those other books that are not scripture that say Jesus did a miracle when he was nine years old or or 12 or 13, those are all lies. The Bible, John chapter two says he did his first miracle at Cana. And it was after he was baptized in the Jordan River and the Holy Spirit came upon him in power. And he did it by the power of the Spirit. We also have been given the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I give you the Holy Spirit to come upon you in power, Acts 1.8. And we also have the power of the Holy Spirit. And so everything Jesus did, he did it in a flesh human body with flesh emotions It says in Hebrews chapter four that he was tempted in every way, just as we are. He had feelings just like you. Yes, Jesus had feelings just like you. He was tempted in every way, just like you. And yet he was without sin because he learned to walk in the power of the spirit and to speak the word of God. And so, yes, Jesus hung on the cross and he was beaten and flogged. And he, as he hung there, he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Well, you say, well, that was Jesus. Well, I've explained he was in a flesh body with flesh emotions and feelings just like you. But also Stephen did it in Acts chapter seven, Acts chapter seven, verses fifty nine and sixty. And this is Stephen. And it says, while they were stoning him, while they are stoning him, he's, they're throwing their stones and he's dying. Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Verse 60. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he said this, he fell asleep. And so we see that even Stephen, now we know he was not God and he did not do this as a God, but he did it as a man. He was a man just like you and me, flesh, human being. And yet he also, while he was being killed, said, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. So I want us to see now and study this and we'll continue this tomorrow that you are able to do it. You may look at these scriptures about loving your enemies, about walking in love. And oh, before we do that, I wanted to show you something else. But you are able to do this. God said you can. But there was something else I wanted to show you first. There are a whole lot of scriptures in the New Testament that talk about how we are to treat one another. And so I have looked up some scriptures, and this may not even probably be all of them, but it's a few of them. These are scriptures that mention the words one another or each other, one another or each other. Now listen to these one another scriptures. John 13 34 and 35. A new command I give you, love one another. There's a one another scripture. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Verse 35, by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Notice he says it three times in two verses, love one another, love one another, love one another. And it is the sign by which the world will know that we are his disciples and we are his children. Then we see the phrase each other in John fifteen twelve. John fifteen twelve. My command is this, love each other. Well, maybe another translation would say love one another. There it is again. Love each other or love one another as I have loved you. In Mark 9, 50, that's five zero. Mark 9, 50, be at peace with each other. Be at peace with each other. Romans 12, 10, be devoted to one another be devoted to one another and then that's the first part of the verse the second part of the verse romans 12 10 honor one another above yourselves so we see this is another characteristic of love love honors what does love do love honors other people 
Humility also honors. You know, that's a characteristic of pride. Pride hates to give honor to anybody. Pride hates to give honor to others. Humility will give honor, but so does love. Love and humility go hand in hand. Love honors others. And this says, honor one another above yourselves. Romans fourteen thirteen says, stop passing judgment on one another. We talked about that last week. Stop passing judgment on one another. Don't judge one another. Romans fifteen seven. accept one another, accept one another. Romans fifteen fourteen. instruct one another. Romans sixteen sixteen. greet one another with a holy kiss. Galatians five thirteen. serve one another in love. Now, this is another attribute of love. Love serves. Again, this is another attribute of humility. Pride hates to serve. Humility will serve. Love serves. Serve one another in love. Galatians 5.13. Then Galatians 6.2. Carry each other's burdens. Ephesians 4.2. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Be patient, bearing with one another. Well, remember, 1 Corinthians 13.4 says love is patient. Well, I'm out of time and I'll pick this list up again tomorrow. Now, join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.